Halifax or it was in Beijing? At one of those congresses, I heard Dr. Pinnock. Factual, motivational, enlightening, filled with content. And like the Trinidadians say, wow, oh God, oh God. That was brilliant. He touched on uh, some very important things. He touched on the accountability thread. Education is serious political activity, whether you like it or not. The economic fortunes of a country is tied to its education and training provision. And that is why politicians will never allow decisions about education to rest just with technical education people. It's serious business. And today people recognize this. All of those tigers, they have created educational systems, strong TVET, strong academic, two ladders up. If you notice those countries, they, they have the tourism too. Hmm? They have the tourism like us. They have the financial services. They also have a strong manufacturing sector, and they pay quite a bit of attention to agriculture. Yeah? You listen to Trump, ain't it? Are you listening to Donald Trump? Huh? Might not make sense to you, but he is making sense to a lot of the traditional Americans. What he is saying is, make America great again. Obama has started it. Obama brought back the manufacturing to the states. Brought back. Don't mind all the noise. He brought it back. What Trump is saying, I am going to go further. The others out there, they have to come back. He is saying that if you carry your, our business outside, when you come back in with your parts, I'm going to charge you 35%. Listen, he's making sense to them. What are we doing for ourselves? Are we going to continue to rely on tourism? And I'll find... Let us get our economies shot in on every plug. In the Caribbean, CARICOM has just set up um, a couple of years ago a Caribbean Court of Justice. Yeah? And the Jamaicans and Barbadians know what we're talking about. We had a case at the Caribbean Court, Caribbean Court, we call the Murray case, that set the tone for people traveling. Jamaican woman come down to Barbados and she was sent back home by the immigration. Because we are island people, you know. We get very insular. The jobs are for the people home. Not so. We had over 30 to 40,000 Guyanese working in Barbados just two years ago. But those were the remnants of well-trained Guyanese under the Burnham system that had a good TVET system. I know the Jamaicans, the Cubans are pushing you, ain't it? The Cubans come up, they're well-trained people. So, in the Caribbean, the CVQ has been designated as one of those qualifications that you can move freely and work across the Caribbean on. And with, the, and with that case, set the tone for the Caribbean, you can move and go to any of the CARICOM states. They, they can't turn you back that easy. And if you have the CVQ or any of the other degrees or whatever, quick so you can find work. So things are happening. So we have to get real. So he touched on all the major issues and the futuristic issues that we will have to grapple with. We are not special anymore. The money has shifted to the east. And the powers of be are interested in places like Africa, where there are millions of people. Massive market. Look at the development taking place in Africa. So we are not that important. So we have to do for ourselves. We have to pay our way. And we have to earn our keep. So we have to get smart, wisen up, build capacity in our population, and get moving. He touched also on delivery of education and using the technology. We have a different set of learners. They don't learn with this face-to-face -face thing anymore. They know that when they come to do a TV program, they know when the equipment is outdated better than you. 
So we have to get real. Are you ready? Huh? No, you're at the end. Panel discussion. If you have any questions for Dr. Pinnock, and I know you will, there's a panel discussion. Write them down. There's a panel discussion at the end. And now we have um, Senior Director at Heart, Dr. Marcia Roamont. And she is going to deal with an integrated approach using capacity building initiatives to drive TV education in the educational system. Thank you, Eastman. <laughs> Colleagues, after Dr. Pinnock, it will be a hard act to follow. But I hope he has woken you up after lunch. Honorable Irene Dick, senior officers from the ministry, late my colleagues from the Heart Trust, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I really want to congratulate you on this initiative, inviting us over here to be a part of your TVET conference. It demonstrates your commitment the Honorable Minister Irene Dick has been here from quarter to seven this morning, Minister, and you have sat patiently and you have listened. You're taking it all in and you're going to look at your system and you're going to strategize. So I want to congratulate you on your vision. <clears throat> now, colleagues, I am not going to be very long. This is a conference, and so far what has been happening this morning, it goes against our philosophy of teaching and learning. Now you have sat, you have listened, and you have taken it all in. I am just anxious to hear your voices. I sit there and I look at you and I look around and I wonder what you're thinking. Now I am supposed, so really we practice the learner-centered approach and the fundamental aspect of that means that our learners have to be a part of the learning. We need to hear what they know. We need to hear how they think. And so I am here to talk about capacity building for TVET professionals. I am not going to consider myself an expert, nor the only person in the room who knows about this. I want to hear from you. And so very quickly, I know we don't have much time, I would like you to turn to your neighbor and just to share any thoughts that you have on the subject. Just begin to talk. And it, you can't have it so nice all morning, you're just sitting down quietly and not. So I just want you to turn to your neighbor and begin to talk. Anything that comes to your mind as it relates to the subject. And you may be very well be the one I'm going to ask to tell us what you have been talking about. So everybody needs to get talking now. Come on. I'm going to give you two to three minutes to do that. So the second phase. 
Ou vou ganhar a mesma experiência com a Teresa de Lanti na o que passa de na área e na Jamaica. Ok, então so a the willingness is now important to embark on the the, the phase that when, in which the Jamaica, you are in Jamaica or in other parts of the Caribbean to bring on the change. Thank you, well, is that? Thank you, well. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, thank you. Just one more, we just have time. Ahisa Enriquez. Good afternoon. Um, what we were discussing, and that's because we have different backgrounds, is that um, Mr. Pinnock's um, presentation resonated a lot with me for the simple reason that I am not, I don't work in the educational field. I do come from a business background and it made a lot of sense to me to talk from the perspective of what you are going to need in the future because in the end you can't pay, you know, in, the, in, in any store with a smile. You have to pay with actual money, you have to make it and you have to know where to go in order to have the skills and, and I love the fact that you said it's not about a job, it's the skills that you have. And I think we're already um, experiencing that. Me personally, um, I went through the whole program, did what my parents told me, all of that. <clears throat> but in the end, it's the skills that keep me working and it's the skills that bring me everywhere else that I need to be. Apart from that, and that's something that I want to emphasize, the attitude. I can teach, well, I've been teaching certain things, but I've also learned a lot of things along the way. It does not matter how many diplomas and how many degrees I have. If my mindset is that I am not able to do something, I don't deserve it, or on the other hand, that I'm entitled, but I don't want to do the work, I will not succeed. So that is what we were talking about, that you need to have a mindset that goes with that skill set. It's, it's together, it's not just one thing or the other. And I think that in whatever educational system, wherever in the world that you choose, some cultures have advantages because they come with a different package already of norms and values, but you can teach everyone their own responsibility and their own accountability. And I think that if you want that educational system in your, in your country, and it's definitely on this island to succeed, we can put lots of money into all types of programs. We will need them. We can look at different scenarios for the future, economically, politically, even the weather will make a lot of difference in how we're going to do things. But if we do not work on the personal development, the mindset, the emotions of the person, and respond to those, it's just money lost. We can just all go to the beach. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Isn't that great, colleagues? At you, that is, and that is one area, Aisa, in which we share the same values, in which we, we, we share the same beliefs. So we connect in many ways. So don't think that we are the only ones coming here to tell you something. There is a lot that you know that you can build on. And that is one of the fundamental things about TVET in Jamaica. And we emphasize that in our curriculum. It is the attitude. And we say the attitude is very important. I had said one last thing, but I think Terence wants to share something with us. Terence? Uh, I was told I could uh, express the uh, wishes and or, or the, the things we talked about at this table. Uh, what we, we talked about was a lot about the mind shift as well. We. Uh, we discussed the mind shift, we discussed that attitude issue. Um, we sort of reached a, 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 a conclusion that teachers need to have that mind shift as well. Teachers need to see their students in a different way. <laughs> and students need to see themselves in a different way. See, students need to realize that they have competencies and they can achieve competencies and, like a lot of speakers said, transfer those competencies throughout their life. 
to different jobs, different things that they do. Uh, so that it, it's, it's a little bit of uh, knowing your worth and uh, going through life with that. Thank you, Terence. Very critical, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, to the profile of the TVET learner, the confidence. And I'm glad he said that. Now, I will just quickly go through this presentation dealing with capacity building. You have heard a lot about TVET being said this morning, right into the afternoon. It is about education, lifelong learning. It refers to all forms of knowledge, skills, and attitudes that are necessary for the world of work. It comprises education, training, skill development, activities relating to occupational fields, production, and livelihoods. TVET is broad and all-encompassing. It's not only about learning a skill with your hands. It's also about the ability to think. It's when we talk about TVET, and you have said some of that, we're talking about the employability skills, attitude is critical, transversal skills. That's a new term in TVET. You can go in any environment and find that these skills are very necessary. It doesn't have to be only in manufacturing. It can be in agriculture. It can be in the animation sector. Any whether at home or, or abroad, we are finding that these skills are important skills that you will need everywhere. Citizen skill, citizenship skills, skills for lifelong learning. We talk about different levels of TVET. As Dr. McLean took you through the integration model this morning, those were emphasized. And we talk about different ways of delivering TVET. And they are all there. Now, TVET is also about economic development. So many countries feel that it is TVET that will take us, far, take us forward economically. Now that's a diagram I have there for you, and this diagram is from UNESCO. And it said that at one point we had a case where we had skills shortage because many of our countries had poor investment climate low inflows of foreign direct investment. Dr. Pinnock spoke about some of that, and Dr. Maduro spoke about the economic benefit this morning. Low innovation, low productivity and growth, un un unemployment, all that transcends into skills shortages. We never had enough skills to fill all that was needed, and there was a low demand for skills. Now we are moving from that cycle into a new cycle where there is more, there is a high demand for skills because the investment climate in many countries has improved. We have high inflows of foreign direct investment, knowledge application and innovation, high productivity and growth is taking place. We have opportunities for employment or to create employment and this is leading to a demand for more and better skills. It is said that TVET is a master key that can alleviate poverty, promote peace, especially in some Middle East countries. They are really using TVET as a way to address social issues, with persons not, countries not living well together, um, individuals not cohabiting harmoniously. And so we feel that when you give them skills, when you teach people how to collaborate, how to coexist, then TVET can be the route through which this can be done. And they will live more harmoniously. What kind of education is serviceable for the modern economy? Um, recently, our Minister of Education and our Minister of Tourism and Entertainment, they came on the same platform in Jamaica to promote skills development in the tourism sector. Very soon, or at the moment, we are attracting some high investment in tourism. And we recognize that in Jamaica, we will need the skills so that persons can be prepared for those jobs. So what we are saying is that TVET does not exist in isolation. It will be important for us to work with the ministers in the other areas so that jobs 
that the, the jobs that we attract, the areas in which we train, are relevant to what is happening in our country. So if the banking sector is important to you, it's going to be important that you work with that sector to attract the relevant jobs and to train for the jobs in that area. Now, when we look at TVET, and this was mentioned earlier on, we have to look at TVET in the context of the Sustainable Development Goals. I'm not going to go through them at length. They are all there. These were approved in September in New York by over 150 countries. These are the goals that are guiding us as, as as guiding the different countries now. And we believe that TVET is related to all of these goals. TVET will help us to come up with solutions in these areas. What is happening here? Next. Okay. Shanghai Consensus, that was the conference that was talked about earlier, where we one of the themes, one of the areas coming out from the Shanghai Consensus is the importance of enhancing the relevance of TVET. Another theme is access and improve quality and equity. As you build your TVET system, these are areas that you will need to consider. How do you adapt the qualifications and develop pathways? You will hear a little more about that later on from Dr. Don Peer improving the evidence base so you can use research to make the decisions and not just anecdotally come up with issues that will inform how you move ahead. Strengthen governance, expanding partnerships. We cannot exist in silos. We have to work with the other TVET providers, you have to work with the other government agencies. We will need to work with the industries. That's very key to quality TVET. Increase investment in TVET, diversify financing. How do we finance TVET? I'm not sure what your model is, but these certainly um, you will have to consider. And advocate for TVET. In Jamaica, we have senior ministers of government. We have senior officials in the ministry, like um, Dr. McLean over there, senior members from the institutions. We've seen Dr. Um, Fritz Pinnock talking about TVET and the benefits of TVET. So it's really from the highest level. What's happening? It's not moving. Now, I am, I'm putting all of this in the context of what I will be focusing on. These, when we talk about expanding access, making TVET available to more persons, including those young people who are not in employment, that is what we mean when we talk about access. Everybody from the cradle to the grave. So if you are 56 and you want a change in career, TVET should be a pathway for you to go and upgrade and move into new areas. So it is for young people, it is for the not so young, it is for mature adults, it's for everybody. And, but it's also talking about not only access, but quality. There was a time when we in Jamaica would see TVET as learning a trade and we didn't understand or begin to realize how important it is as part of the educational process. It's really part of education. It's not like um, training is on one side and TVET. The, the te vo technical vocational area and the general area are all coming and being inextricably linked. They are all merged. So when you come out as a TVET graduate, you should be a rounded graduate. And so that emphasizes the quality of TVET. That is what we mean when we talk about quality. And equity, so it's not like one group of persons over there have, a, have one experience in TVET, another group has a different experience. It doesn't work that way. We have standards that are consistent no matter where you are and where you are pursuing TVET. It could be in the communities, it could be in the institutions, it could be on the job. We all need to follow the standards right across. So these are the areas that are related to access, quality, and equity. Professionalizing our TVET staff. To raise the quality, it's important for us to professionalize 
the staff and to improve the teaching standards. And I will just speak to those in a little more detail. And all of that, um, ladies and gentlemen, it's related to human capacity building. And this is a quote for, from UNESCO. The develop UNESCO, and it's also aligned to one of the strategic priorities in the Heart Trust. The support for building human capacity in developing learning materials, in proper implementation of TVET programs, in accreditation, in, um, in articulation, so right across in the design, the delivery, the assessment, the accreditation, the evaluation. How do we build the capacity of those in TVET to be able to do this? And so we spend a lot of time talking about human capacity building. Process of developing and improving technical skills, the capabilities of individuals and institutions to perform core functions sustainably and to continue to develop and improve over time. Why do we invest so much in capacity building? We want to ensure that we have the competencies to deliver quality TVET. We also want to ensure that our institutions are following the standards so that they can get accreditation. And it's also about our instructors strengthening the pedagog pedagogical and technical skills of our instructors and un ultimately about improving the learners and the outcomes and producing quality graduates from the TVET program. Something is wrong here as we thing came out. Sorry about that, it's gonna take. We follow what is known as a capacity building model where we don't just say this is what you need to become a better trained or a better skilled person. It is related to your needs. What are the needs? So we may find that your teachers need um, technical upgrading. We are introducing new programs in agriculture, like apiculture or um, underwater welding. <laughs> That's a new one. Or animation or business process outsourcing. We may not have the teachers in the system who can ready deliver those, but they have a background that we can build on. And so we take them into workshop settings and we give them the competencies that will better enable them to deliver the programs. And the capacity building department at the Heart Trust has conducted quite a number of training sessions and these are just some of them. We talk about CBET methodology, assessment item, how to write assessment items, language, literacy, and numeracy. Those are very basic, important skills. They are very important to a TVET environment. Some of them they are, related, are related to the technical skills, some to the pedagogical areas, others to the leadership and management areas. But we recognize that our TVET professionals have to be undergoing continuous upgrading, and these are just some of the areas. It is not just the workshops, but we focus on sending them into the industry so the teachers take time to go out to find out what's the cutting edge technology, what's happening in their area. And so we, we refer to that as industry furlough. We pair them with other institutions, other teachers who may be doing well, refer to that as mentoring and coaching. We have a knowledge platform one of the knowledge platforms that we currently find very useful is the UNESCO Univoc website. Work shadowing job placement. These are all forms of capacity building, not just the workshops and the seminars. I mentioned some of the areas already. They are there. Assessor training, that's one of the key areas in which we do a lot of capacity building. Because as we talk about TVET, it is very important that we deliver what is known as a competency-based approach. And assessor training is very important to that. These are questions we ask ourselves as we go through the capacity building process. What capacities do we need to build in our TVET professionals? Whose capacities do we need to focus on at this time? How do we go about building it? And how do we sustain that capacity? 
So it's not only about coming to the workshops. What happens after you leave the workshops feeling stimulated and upbeat? What structures can be put in place to help you to learn at the level of your institution and to learn among yourselves? Um, I'm just using this slide, this one, just to emphasize that teacher training and upgrading is very integral to quality TVET. The UNESCO said it's one of the most important factors that impact on quality TVET. You need to have well-qualified teachers and instructors. So there is a need for in-service continuing training for our TVET teachers and trainers. It's also important for you to have the competency framework, the different persons who work in your TVET system. What skills do they need to have? What should their competencies be? What should their knowledge, um, what kind of knowledge do they need? This is the Vocational Training Development Institute in Jamaica. It was established since 1969. Here we focus on the training and upgrading of TVET teachers. Not only the teachers, but professionals who work in TVET at different levels. So it also includes those who lead and those who manage TVET institutions. Um, we said a lot about career counseling that's also integral to TVET. It's not only for TVET, but it's very integral because many of our new areas are coming out and we need to tell our learners that these are new emerging areas and this is where it will take you in terms of the pathways. So we have been, and it, having this institution offer higher level training for TVET professionals did not come overnight. As I said, we have been around since 1969. Another program that we find in high demand as we talk about developing quality TVET, because as I said, assessment is important. Um, these are some skills that TVET professionals in general need to have. Pedagogical skills, networking st skills, because being with the industry, it's very critical and hearing from the industry and using that knowledge to inform the development and the delivery of your cu curriculum, it's very important. So we will, uh, our instructors, our leaders, our managers, it's very important that we know how to do this. Okay, we find that in capacity building, our institutions, our individuals are at different stages. Some can just take the information and run with it. Others, we will need to work with them to hold their hands to help them to improve the systems, to constantly be in their institutions. And so these are the different stages as we work with the institutions and the individuals to build better TVET institutions that we have to go through. And these are some pictures of our teachers involved in some workshop sessions. We took them for two weeks during the summer and we gave them some exposure in new areas. That's fashion designing, floral arrangements, motor vehicle repairs, I think this was AC repairs. And this is my last slide to tell you that TVET is moving on. In 2050, we have different eras at different times, and we are finding that there are areas of different focus as we move on. And we are now in the wave where we are talking about digital technology, electronics, aviation space. By about 2050, we are going to talk a lot about sustainability, which is one of the key areas in TVET, because you know, TVET areas, they draw heavily on the environment. Now, how do we get our professionals and our learners to recognize that while we try to earn and to benefit from TVET now, we need to preserve it for the future? So that is it, ladies and gentlemen, professionalizing TVET, ensuring that we are delivering quality TVET and we are really producing learners who can go out there and make a difference and be at the level as that of a graduate from an ac a traditional academic institution. We will need to train our teachers and to put structures in place to ensure that we are raising the image of TV. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um. Marcia, I think it is two minutes past three. We are right back on schedule. And you heard about the importance of teacher training, and I am going to be 
nudging Minister Dick. Teacher training costs money. PVEC costs money. And, and any time you are trying to transform the educational system, it will not be easy. You will meet resistance. It is, it is an upsetting of the status quo. Any change is an upsetting of the status quo. But education and training has three meshes systems. Huh? The curriculum. What is to be taught? People will fight over that. Some countries fight wars over that. The pedagogical issues, how it is to be taught, and how it is to be assessed. Especially, those are very powerful mediums, and when you try to change those in a country, you will meet resistance. So you have to look for the change levers. You will find change levers here, Minister. And you have to look for the advocates. I went to the ILO technical meeting in Panama, that was about four years ago. And there was the Minister of Education who was the major leader and champion of transforming that educational system to meet the expansion of the Panama Canal. Otherwise, the Panamanians couldn't take the jobs. She was meeting with heavy crit criticism. People were saying, down with the minister. But there she was, transforming that educational system, making sure that the youth get the training that they need so they could take the jobs benefiting from, benefiting from that expansion. In China, when they went to the world, the CIE can or the ACCC Congress in Beijing, there was the president saying that within five years they want to transform 20% of the academic universities in China to technical universities. Because China still has a large population that is underdeveloped. Plenty poor people in China. But they are preparing to take over the world. So there still is a lot of work to be done. And there were changing, it was almost 200 universities from academic universities to technical universities to build their human resource capacity. So you need advocates. Find them and work with them. In every change, you will find people who will come with you. Those are the change levers. Then you have the fence sitters. Let, let me see here, you can get it done. And when you get it done, then they, stop aboard, they step aboard. And some won't come at all. Some will leave the system. I remember, and Pauline uh, Paulette could attest to this, when the CVQ issue was it, I am not a trained TVET person, but you can't talk no more TVET than me. Because I had the TVET subjects in CXE, but it was not, they were not high flyer subjects. People like the subjects with the big the science subjects, the officers like the science subjects, and uh, the subject with a lot of injuries. The TVET subjects in CXE, small injuries, they don't need to shout about inside CXE. I took them. And I remember when it was sent to my first canter meeting. I said, boy, why you don't know nothing about this thing? I went to the internet, yeah? And pulled down some OECD, doc OECD documents and read and recognized that the move was to bring education and training close together. When I went to the canter meeting, I think it was at Knoxwood Court. You were there. And I gave my opening volley. They were surprised of this coming from. I didn't know that there was a difference of opinion with CXE. And I went back and challenged the system. Remember at one of the big meetings in CXE, somebody asked, why, why must we get involved in that type of education? We're an examining board. But it was well armed. I asked them who took on transforming themselves in the UK and offered the NVQ. It was the traditional examining boards. And we got on board. And now CXE is one of the major pushes of the CVQ in the school. You need your change levers. I don't know what is happening here, but in Barbados, they have now moved the retirement age to 67. Yes? 
you could have retired at 55 and get all your benefits and uh, early and compulsory at 60 and the government moved it to 67. Now we have a case in court where uh, one of the statutory boards retires some people at 60 and they go on to the high court. So at the same time, we have high unemployment, youth unemployment, and they're raising the retirement age. Hmm? So we have to train the youth. But some of those people, people are not going to retire easy now. They are going to retrain. So there are two populations that you have, you have to deal with. So think about these things. <laughs>